Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a Truder, welcome back to Fallout 3, at least for the moment, because, uh, okay, today I've got something a bit special planned for you. Now, you may recall, last year, we moved many a Truder headquarters, which is a very fancy way of saying, a moved house, and naturally that meant a whole bunch of stuff got packed up, unpacked, moved around, a whole bunch of stuff I hadn't thought about for years, uh, saw the light of day. And one of those things was my original Xbox 360, the console that I used to record the vast majority of the videos that were on many a true nerd for the first couple of years before I got a decent PC. And when I saw it, that got me to thinking, which is, okay, this thing had a hard drive in it. And in theory, just in theory, how far back does my Fallout save data actually go? Can I find data that predates many a true nerd? And indeed, can I find the absolute holy grail, my first ever Fallout playthroughs? And uh, let's just say I found some very interesting stuff indeed. I scrolled right down to the bottom of all my Fallout 3 save games, and I found save 0036. And uh, okay, in case you don't know how Fallout save file numbering worked in this generation, the very first time you load up this game and you click save, that makes file 0001, and that is the only 0001 you'll ever possess. If you write over that file, it becomes 0002. If you then click create new save game, that would be 0003. In short, this down here is the 36th time I ever saved playing Fallout 3. However, I know for a fact this is not my first playthrough, because as some of you may be well aware, my first playthrough in Fallout 3 was actually not a good experience. I got a bit frustrated after about two hours because I misunderstood some core mechanics. I can't find any evidence of that file existing, so I assume what I must have done is uninstalled Fallout 3 and deleted the save file at the same time. This, however, I believe is the second character I ever played as, and okay, if you see the name Arya and that rings a bell, then well done, you've been paying attention. Arya used to be the go-to name I used for pretty much every game before I did many a true nerd, though I have occasionally used the name since. My first Femshep was Arya, my first Dragonborn was Arya. I can't remember why I started using the name Aria, but it was just my go-to name in pretty much every role-playing game. But okay, let's dive in and see if I can, yes, retroactively reconstruct how I played the game. We're going to be video game detectives here. I'm going to try and figure out just how bad I was at Fallout the first time I played it. Okay, welcome back to Fallout 3 on the Xbox 360. Oh, look at that frame rate, lovely. And... Uh, Okay, Arya is apparently in... in danger. Or caution at the bare minimum. Okay, for some reason... I can't remember where I am or what's happening. It has been over a decade since I played this save file, but for some reason, Arya is in danger. I'm gonna give myself props straight away for getting as far as having power armor on only 36 saves, and of course, the auto saves. I had a, a terrifying level of faith in the auto saves back in these days, apparently. Oh, I think I may have just located the, the problem. There's, there's a death claw over there. Okay, so I can see something's, something's gone a little bit on there. A little bit on the wrong side over here. Oh, that's a... Okay, problem. Never mind, problem. Problem kind of solved. Welcome back to Fallout on console. Somehow even more broken. Because yes, fascinatingly, this is the only save file I can find with Arya's name on it. So I didn't at any point finish this playthrough. Or rather, I decided to start again, play a different save file at some point. For some reason, yeah, this one just got abandoned. And we're gonna try and figure out why. I mean, it could have been that death claw. Could that death claw have been enough to make me restart the entire game? I don't know. But okay, oh Moira. Okay, Moira has been waiting for me to return with test data for over a decade. I'm so sorry. Okay, here's what we can do. We can use a combination of, uh, yes, data from the stats tab and the quest log to try and figure out what I have and haven't done. Here we go, main mission. So, 
it would appear that I did manage to, yes, just complete Waters of Life. Then we were able to escort Dr. Lee inside the Citadel. And then we got to Vault 87, search Lamplight Caverns for a way into Vault 87. So, okay. Go over to the map here, figure out what we've got going on. And I never made it there. Okay, so I knew I had to go here, but I never actually made it. I got the information from the computer, and obviously, yeah, that's Smith Casey's garage, so obviously we've uh, made it in that direction. But we never made it to Little Lamplight at all. In fact, did we go... did we go north? We did! Okay, this is... this is interesting. Hang about, the map is overwhelmingly not explored and... Okay, well, here's interesting. There's a manual marker. I didn't set that today, meaning John from over a decade ago set that. But where was he trying to get to? I have no idea. Okay, map markers. That will be useful. We can use map markers to determine what I have and haven't done. So, Vault 101, Springvale, Springvale School, obviously. Looks like at that point, probably, yeah, we know we've done a bit of uh, Wasteland Survival. So, been to Super Duper Mart. This looks packed, but it's not really. Looks to me like I probably... Okay, how did I get to Rivet City? Could I have just gone round the coast without tagging anything else? Presumably, yes, though... Hang about, why can't I... Oh, okay, yes, that marker's just gone missing because uh, now it's blocked off because we're post-Waters of Life. GNR Building Plaza right there, and then this is the various buildings around the mall. So, okay, hadn't really done uh, much diving into uh, the Wasteland Ruins uh, at all. Most of my exploration is uh, down in the, uh, yeah, southwest, obviously. So it would appear we pass by Andale, know about the Nuka Plant, but never actually went there. Pass by Fort Independence... Just a random power station. Robco down to Tenpenny. Okay, various missions could have sent me to Tenpenny. So I probably tried to make it to Tenpenny. Then we've got, uh, yeah, Jocko's Pop and Gas Stop. Gurdashade. I did make it to Gurdashade together with uh, Evergreen Mills. Okay, so I was not making my life easy. That area can be a bit on the tough side. So, okay. Various locations there. But I'm more interested in, yeah, my run to the north. So... Passed by Agatha, got to Minefield, uh, probably said there by Moira. Yes, here we go. In fact, I've got the order I did things uh, for Moira. So, uh, became radioactive, uh, went and got the food, uh, and then... Oh, I got the medicine too. I was nice to Moira. Yes, indeed. Go to Minefield. So, I went to Minefield uh, first up, became uh, seriously injured, uh, and then I started testing mole rats, but I never finished it and never turned to ten. But I didn't stop there. It would appear I just, uh, for some reason, started going in a massive straight line in that direction. Just literally beelining up to the top of the map. Went over to here. Temple of the Union. Okay. Probably given a hang about Washington Monument, Museum of Technology, Museum of History, National Archives... Okay, no, I did not pick up a mission at the Lincoln Memorial. I've never been there. Instead, I just ran into the Temple of the Union and Caleb Smith said, Hey, get rid of the super mutants, but I've never been there, so I haven't been able to verify. There's no mutants, it's actually slavers. Power plant. Uh, resort homes. Uh, up to County Reservoir. These are not big major locations. No mission would point me here. For reasons best known to me... Oh. Radio tower and train tunnel. I know precisely what I was trying to do. I decided I wanted to do the pit, for reasons best known to me. Despite the fact that, yes, the other DLCs uh, did not care about in the slightest. Ignored Not of This World, uh, ignored Aging the Outcast, even though that one's much easier to get to. But yes, for um, uh, whatever reason, though, actually... Okay, I saw the riverboat for local flavour, but despite actually investigating it, I decided uh, not to go. Maybe I couldn't afford it, I don't know. But yeah, I kind of started going towards the pit, then just sort of changed my mind. Though, by the looksy of it, yeah, it's one of the last things I did before this run got abandoned. And we did disarm the atomic bomb. 
good for us. Uh, obviously, following in his footsteps, we just made our way straight to GNR, so uh, no distractions uh, at that point. Though, I think I saw up above... Uh, hang about... Yes, blood ties. So, uh, very early on, I was given Deliver Lucy's message. I just never bothered. Yep, Arafu's on the map, but I never went there. At some point, somebody gave me an introduction to Replicated Man, but how much did I do? I've searched for at least some clues. And the woman from the railroad did approach me and say, tell Zimmer he's dead, but I never made a decision one way or the other on that one. Oh yeah, the start of the game, it was pretty much all just straight lining. I popped into Tenpenny Tower at some point, but straight into Scientific Pursuit, straight into Tranquility Lane, straight into Wards of Life, in fact... Basically, aside from Power of the Atom, I didn't do a single submission. I was just straight up beelining the main missions. Still, I tell you what, I wasn't doing too bad on the old equipment front. So, okay, let's figure out exactly what the build was. Because I suspect this is not going to be good. Also, oh my goodness. Oh, those 360 textures. I love it. Okay, Tesla armor and matching Enclave officer hat. I'm guessing I was... Yes, I must have just been getting into energy weapons, given I'm holding some form of a plasma thing. Basic plasma rifle, pretty decent condition, so... Okay, I was trying to boost my, uh, yes, energy score. Beyond that, the loadout is... Oh, wow. Very random and all over the place, so... Uh, classic Chinese assault rifle, still got a baseball bat. Fisto is here, lovely. Carrying a flamer. And carrying so much fuel, I'm blatantly never using it. Still carrying a hunting rifle, which of course, yes, this being three, not New Vegas, was uh, terrible. Just absolutely terrible. Don't even bother with that nonsense. Laser rifle too, so okay. I missed the memo. They were using the same ammo as the plasma, so that was a bit pointless. Also, two rippers. Might have been a new acquisition, given I never got round to merging them together. And actually, that's... Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. A sledgehammer too, and oh my. John, why are you not using the terrible shotgun? You've got the terrible shotgun. Wow, I I cleared out Evergreen Mills. Okay, so where's that death claw, buddy? Me and you have to chat. Oh yeah, you better run. You better... And also fling yourself into space. Okay, the physics is very, very wonky. Okay, I feel like my excuse me. No, 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 no. No, you flipping don't actually. Just. Okay, also don't forget, John, this is Fallout 3. Back when armor didn't really, like, do anything. You're going to explode now. And one. And number two. Come on. Oh, yeah. That Fallout 3 blood explosion. I love it. Oh, now you decide to show up. Now you've decided to show up, do you? Just waiting until I'm vulnerable. Okay, well, that's absolutely... No, 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 my revenge! Okay, my revenge went wrong. I'm increasingly suspicious that John of, uh, yes, 12 odd years ago, may have literally come to the conclusion, hey, this game appears to be really badly broken, and I assumed that maybe starting a new file would help fix it. But no... No John of the past, you didn't realise uh, this is just how Fallout 3 works, unfortunately. Alright, the big one here, and uh, I will say that is a, that's a pretty sensible build. Alright, possibly, I cannot remember. I might have, like, looked up what the stats did after my very first playthrough, so I'll admit that's a bit high on the old uh, endurance front, but that is a competent enough build. I'm not actively embarrassed. Oh, though I did go for a slightly wild, uh, yeah, distribution of uh, skill points. Okay, I think young John may have just been scared of numbers uh, that weren't round, and this has probably just been created uh, by, say, a skill book that I found, because everything else seems to have been aggressively rounded uh, to the nearest five. So... Uh, yeah, I was really diversifying between every weapon class, even taking explosives uh, up to 50, though lockpick was apparently my pride and joy right there. That appears to be my... is that my highest stat? No, small guns is 77. Completely ignored... Uh, well, I ignored uh, unarmed. That melee weapons did not get up to 39 by itself, so... Okay, pretty high repair. 
as well, actually. Repair, science. I just kind of got everything to 70-ish. And for some reason, just didn't really consider 100 might be a good idea. Black Widow, Bloody Mess, Commando. Interesting. So, actually, you know what? That's thanks to Vance Defense in Fallout 3 was uh, such a good thing to use, albeit limited by poor AP. So uh, that's not terrible. Oh, there's a straight up mistake. I bet I took Daddy's Girl really early on before I realized that, yes, in Fallout 3, you are swimming in so many skill points. You never take a perk that just gives you skill points because uh, it's a waste of a perk. Complete waste of a perk. Educated finesse. Two intense trainings. Okay, can't remember what I boosted, but could well have been intelligence after I realized how strong it was. It's entirely possible intelligence didn't start at uh, 9 or 10. Life giver into, yes, obviously, power armor training, got rad regeneration. Strong back might have been, yes, a bit overkill. And yeah, toughness giving the equivalent of a 10 DR is honestly not bad. That's actually okay. Not as good as in New Vegas, obviously, but pretty damn solid, all things considered. Yeah, only 42 locations discovered, uh, plenty of kills, lots of lock picking. Was really enjoying the lock picking. Not so into the computer hacking though. Maybe I didn't get how the uh, the minigame worked as well. Seriously spamming those stim packs. I was, uh, yes, taking a lot of damage apparently. And uh, okay, not doing a single chem as it turns out. Though yes, we do have a handful of uh, mysteries uh, unanswered here. Such as, uh, why did I decide to do the pit? And only the pet, and then sort of just change my mind once I actually got there. I have no idea, and more importantly, what happened to this playthrough? Why did I stop playing and go over to a different character instead? A mystery perhaps that will never be solved, because, oh, this was just the warm-up. You see, I found something a lot more complete over in the world of New Vegas. So, welcome to Fallout New Vegas, and yes, indeed. So, it turns out we need to begin the investigation immediately. This here is Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition on the Xbox 360. It is the only version of New Vegas on the 360 I ever owned, because I didn't get it when it first came out. I got Fallout 3 a fair bit after it came out, because my first copy was a second-hand edition after the DLC was already released. So probably that save file that you just saw was from somewhere around 2010, give or take. However, this being the Ultimate Edition, it must come from after February 2012. However, I started many a true nerd and Fallout-related playthroughs in New Vegas, which I already knew fairly well at that time, around mid-2013. So, we must currently be in a universe somewhere around probably mid-2012. And I know what you're thinking, John, just go into the Xbox's hard drive, there'll be date stamps attached to all the files. No, something broke with my Xbox's clock long, long, long ago. Every single file in there thinks it's from 2005, which definitely isn't true because neither Fallout 3 or New Vegas existed in 2005. This, however, is where things start getting a bit confusing because I have located Aria, and I am pretty sure this is, in fact, the first Aria I ever played with. And you're probably thinking, hang on, John, that clearly says safe number 1,239. You did not do 1,239 saves on your way to level 15 with your first character. And that's probably true. However, what I believe has happened here is at some point I used Arya's save file to, I don't know, record some extra footage, check the location of something... And then I saved it over it, meaning, as I was discussing earlier, the numbering system skips forward to whatever you're up to. And speaking of which, by the way, I know roughly when that was done. Because directly below that, number 1198 is it Evil John at level 28, clearly at the end of their playthrough. I must have been double checking something while I was recording the finale of Fallout New Vegas Kill Everything and accidentally overwrote the file number. Meanwhile, just above, that's John, level 26, system save. That is John from New Vegas No Kill, moments before beginning her final mission. So, okay, moments of many a true nerd history here. But for whatever reason, this, I believe, is the original Aria I did my playthrough with. 
and there's a reason I'm confident about that. If we do go down to the very bottom, then the earliest save I've got is 0210. Now that is early enough to be consistent with my very first save. However, as you can see from the snapshot there, this Arya is much further along in her journey. Level 34 clearly has done at least one bit of DLC, so it's the same Arya, just the numbers aren't in the right order. And unlike the Fallout 3 universe you just saw, there was no universe where I started playing Fallout New Vegas, then just gave up, uninstalled the game, deleted the save file. This, I believe, is actually my first ever playthrough of Fallout New Vegas, and uh, okay, I was traveling around with Boone, so I figured out pretty fast that he is an unstoppable murder machine, a nuclear bomb that walks like a man. Okay, so, pretty standard opening here, Ghost Town gunfight, obviously resolved in favor of Good Springs itself. Straight up the road to Prim, where I decided to, okay, sort those guys out in favor of the NCR. So, I was NCR stooging right from the get-go. Oh yeah, straight up the road to Ranger Jackson, sorting out problems for him, though. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm impressed I did booted at that point. Either I used a stealth boy... Or alternatively, I was a badass, because clearing out that camp is not easy. At a low level, not easy at all. Then again, I was coming into this having played quite a bit of 3. So I understood the cool mechanics a bit better than I did for, uh, yes, the character you just saw. Over into Cold Cold Heart, and uh, okay. I'll have made it to Novak. I did not find uh, the note on Manny's terminal, so I did come fly with me instead. Pretty standard positive ending, decided not to murder everybody. While I was passing through, that'll be when I picked up Boone, and passed through, yes, lucky old son, resolved in favour of the followers on the way past. Straight up to Boulder City, decided to resolve that peacefully too. Okay, so a pretty standard run to date. Though after that point, it looks like, yes, I took some time out to go and do... Some NCR side stuff, so back in your own backyard, a medical mystery, restoring a hope. So, okay, Boone put me on the righteous path of aiding the NCR. Which I'm going to guess is why I, a humble level 15, am standing right here near Bitter Springs. By any chance are we doing this for you? Oh yeah, climb every mountain, no not much, Bitter Springs Infirmary Blues, I forgot to remember to forget. So okay, Boone basically dragged me all the way over here to deal with his personal business. And by the looks of it, I was just travelling with Boone, did not give a damn about anybody else, including Benny, by the looks of it. And uh, Return to Sender was just too big an ask. DLC completely ignored across the board to date. Understandable, I'm only level 15. Unlike Fallout 3, this was not the end of her journey. I've got just a handful of snapshots from later in her life, and some of them raise some interesting questions, shall we say. So, say hello to, um, the next point in Arya's life we have uh, any record of, which is Arya at, um, at level 34. There are questions that could be, um, asked at this point, such as, uh, why did you come in to this bar and or brothel and murder literally everybody apart from that one guy right there who you decided not to murder despite the fact that he's a bit of a bastard why is everybody dead like including yes the um various owners the door to the bank is is open to was i robbing the place i i don't know i mean there's not even that much money in the bank. It's not really worth robbing the casinos in this game. Why did I murder everyone? Even the flipping civilian staff who don't fight back. Why did I murder Fisto? I mean, it wasn't for money. Because if it was, why was I not taking, you know, the 10mm guns? The 10mm guns are worth a lot. Weight to value ratio. Oh, you killed old Ben as well. Okay, so... It looks like we kind of recruited a bunch of people to work here and then came and stormed the place. There's no mission that would make you do this. There's no real reason you'd ever fall out with these guys. Just for some reason, Arya, after her, you know, lovely start, just helping out the NCR, helping Boone move on from his tragedy, she just decided to do this. And I don't know why. Which brings us here four levels later. 
This is the final moment of Arya's life that we have recorded. So, yes, we're just outside the Northern Passage, and I have good reason to believe that we've just completed Honest Hearts. Because, yeah, just look here, we're swimming in Honest Hearts goodies. We've probably literally just pulled these out of the reward chest and then dropped a save beyond the tunnel. And this here is where Arya's save file comes to an end. There's nothing after this point. So one has got to assume I completed this DLC and then just never got round to finishing it. Because as far as I can tell, this save file never made it to the end. So, okay. So after wrapping up the business with Boone, it would appear that I, yes, diverted over towards the Boomers. Despite the fact no one had told me to do that yet. Because bear in mind at this point... We had not gone inside the strip. Benny had still not been avenged. And on top of that, Abba Dabba Honeymoon, of all things. Okay, I was apparently determined to explore the entire map before actually going into the strip. Okay, we picked up Edie at some point. And, uh, okay, various bits of Edie following me around. In fact, actually, you know what? That will have been added into my log at the point the mission actually began. So probably I picked up Edie way, way earlier and just travelled with her for a fair bit of the game, where eventually certain keywords triggered certain data and by accident we began her bits and pieces. So, okay. In fact, that might have been what finally bothered pulling me into, uh, yes, Freeside, at which point I decided to go and see April to get Edie sorted out. I completed the full Brotherhood mission, including all three filtration parts, before dealing with Benny. Fascinating. Including doing Eyesight to the Blind before Crazy Crazy Crazy. Or possibly, well, I might have ended up doing the two at the same time, though then again, Crazy 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 isn't here, so apparently I just sort of ignored that. I'm not sure how, but I did... Let Alice McLafferty know Henry Jameson's employment has been terminated. I mean, to be honest, he was the only person in the bar that didn't end up dead. If that's what I was trying to do, it did not go well. And after being further distracted by playing Cupid, going over to Sunset Sarsaparilla, and bloody hell sorting out Feeble Will by, ah, doing the peaceful resolution, yes, we finally got round to ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Okay, so... I took the long way round to get to that. Then while I was on the strip, yeah, we started talking to Yes Man. Decided to, uh, yes, yeah, sort out Beyond the Beef by making them be not cannibals anymore. Exposing Mortimer by using... Hang on, what did we actually uh, do? Okay, we got rid of Philippe and cooked the meal myself using the recipe. Lovely. And beyond that point, we started, yeah, playing every side. So... We let Mr. House upgrade the Securitrons uh, straight over to uh, I Hear You Knocking. We started doing submissions uh, for the Legion as well. Absolutely lovely. House always wins too, so okay. Obviously completed the first stage of uh, the mission at the weather station in everybody's favour. Bit of time out to do uh, talent pool. Obviously things that go boom is an instant completion. We'd already taken care of the boomers uh, at that point. Finger of suspicion. Yet more submissions uh, for, uh, yes, the Legion as well. And then, okay, the whitewash. Which presumably led me in the direction of uh, Westside for the first time. Though it would appear I decided to, yes, tell the truth to Boyd about Corporal White and not cover it up. So presumably Arcade wasn't with me at the time. Then we freed Joanna, so Bye Bye Love was sorted out. Hard Luck Blues! Okay. I mean, Vault 34 is terrifying, even for me these days. So, alright, not sure how we did that, though. Okay, we did... We did kind of decide to... uh doom the dwellers to save the farmland. But there's no good solution to that mission, so what can you do? Finally got round to dealing with Veronica, though, oh. Okay, Veronica might not have uh, the best ending. She decided to leave by the Luxi of it, tried to join the followers of the apocalypse, and everybody ended up dead. Then I decided to... Okay, at that point, so many people ended up dead, I went and did, yes, Old World Blue, so... Uh, the first bit of DLC I ever did in New Vegas was Old World Blues, as it turns out. 
Jicking off with climbing the antenna, then going into, uh, yes, the uh, X8 high school facility, getting round to Infiltrator last up. And obviously that's the one that uh, was worth the most to me because I'm still wearing the suit to this day. Absolutely lovely. Looks like, yes, I did enough uh, submissions to sort out Old World Blues uh, peacefully. So I was just able to get the uh, Think Tank to back down and back me, which is lovely. And then, okay, after Old World Blues, it was pretty much straight into Honest Hearts at that point. Obviously, Honest Hearts is uh, pretty linear, all things considered, aside from the very end, which is uh, Flight from Zion. So, okay, we decided to do Honest Hearts by fleeing rather than fighting. We backed Daniel, not Joshua Graham. But that was it. Those were the only two. So we did not do Sierra Madre Grand Opening. We never did Dead Money, never did Lonesome Road either. Okay, meanwhile, based on, yes, the active missions and the order they're in, it would appear that I only recently picked up Cass, but never got around to actually, yeah doing her mission. Beyond that, it does kind of look like I got, um, yes, paralysed by an inability to make a decision about factions. Because I took Render up to Kaiser, up to the point where he says kill Mr. House, then no further. Yes Man, to the point where we need to kill Mr. House, then no further. I brought, uh, yes, Don't Tread on the Bear and Beware the Wrath of Kaiser, right up to their limits, but didn't cross the line with either. Although, interestingly, despite King's Gambit being active, I don't see any evidence of GI Blues in, yeah, the completed or active missions. So, possibly I just never got round to speaking to the Kings in this universe. I decided to go off and do DLC adventures instead. Beyond that, I seem to have, yes, just focused on being as liked as possible by everyone. With one interesting exception, which is... Great Khan's Wild Child. So, I mean, we definitely saw we'd done some of, yeah, their submissions. So, I don't know. It's not a fight that the NCR told me to do. Because I'm not far enough down the NCR route for them to send me to go and assassinate the Khan. So, okay, at some point, for some reason, I started murdering some Khans. And I don't know why. Can't help but notice. In this universe, I've done one and only one chem. I do not know what chem that was. I would love to know which is the one and only one drug I did in this entire playthrough. Special wise, oh my. Okay, so I did not realise during this playthrough that uh, perception doesn't do anything. Like, I assume that I was assuming at the time this was helping out my VATS build, but no. No, it was not. Okay, so there is definitely some intensive training and some uh, implants going on here. Strength over, yes. Eight adjusted perception. Perception of ten. There is no reason to ever have a perception ten. That is ridiculous. And yes, as we're now level 38 with intelligence 10, not difficult to have 100 across the board. Just thought of barter, wasn't worth bothering with. Melee weapons as well, down at 17. And survival, yeah, if you're not playing a hardcore mode, there's just not much benefit to it, to be honest. So, okay, uh, pretty easy to hit uh, 100 across the board in this game, gotcha. Poke-wise, what do we have? Oh yeah, I was going for a VATS build, and I bet I thought that perception was helping. Two ranks of action girl, adamantium skeleton, obviously, yeah, some that just uh, come in as a function of playing, together with a few other bits and pieces, Black Widow, Bloody Mass, all perfectly fine. Any surprises down over here? Oh, blimey. Okay, I didn't just go to Old World Blues. Uh, I properly completed that. I got the extra perks and everything. Oh, I even learnt the Khan trick. Presumably just before starting to shoot them. Math, Wrath, Meltdown, Nerves of Steel. All very good perks, to be honest. Got the Scribe Counter as well, hilariously. Sneering Imperialist can be good. Maybe a bit of a waste uh, there. Strong back again. Okay, Young John was obsessed with carrying too much stuff. Just manage your inventory better, John. It's fine. Ah, that'll be why I wanted strong back. Apparently, I just could not make up my mind what weapon I was going to be using, though. John. Okay. 
didn't bother using any of the hotkeys, apparently. Lovely. Just carrying around uh, giant piles of weapons. Uh, that can just be merged together, just to save a tiny bit of space. There you go, John. I've saved you some already. Light shining in darkness. Literally just got that. So, uh, Christine. Okay, that's a good rifle. Glad we've uh, we've got that. Still using Elijah's advanced gun from, uh, yes, Old World Blues. Uh, carrying sort of stuff I could probably do without, though. Okay. Maria is solid for its weight, and I've got a thousand bullets, so why not? Lucky suits my build, to be honest. There was plenty of luck going on there. Okay, that there, that's the Saturnite Fist superheated I used to, yes, murder everyone in the Atomic Wrangler, which, okay, I must have done after I came back from Old World Blues. Alright, something went wrong with my brain when they put it back in because I decided to murder an entire casino for reasons that are not clear. Beyond that, that gun and this machine, you know what? It's not a bad loadout. There's just too many guns here. Alright, what did we or did we... Oh, I never went to Jacobstown. Two DLCs, so many missions done, and I never went to Jacobstown at any point. And I did not go into Quarry Junction. Okay, that was a bit scary, apparently. Didn't bother with any of that, though. Oh my. Searchlight. Never been to Searchlight. Well, that is interesting. I'm guessing by the looks of it, yeah, when I wanted to get to Cotwood Cove, I started at Novak and then just walked in a straight line and ignored the cliffs between me and there, probably going via Echo at the, uh... At the same time, fascinating. So okay, I think if we've got to come to a conclusion here, this New Vegas playthrough, possibly I never finished it also. Oh, New Vegas on the 360, where everything's made out of small cardboard boxes in the distance. I love it. Yes, I possibly never finished this playthrough because of choice paralysis. I just didn't want to side with any faction and upset the others. I just wanted everybody to be happy and get along, and I couldn't find a way to do it, so I stopped playing and moved over to a different file. Fascinating. As opposed to Fallout 3, where it would appear that, uh, yes, my first playthrough was possibly abandoned because a bloody teleporting Deathclaw refused to play by the rules, and I thought the game had broken. But no, that's just how Fallout 3 is sometimes. And thus we come to the end of our little look back into the old days. My very first playthroughs of my very first Fallout games. I've never shared these. I just saw the console in the box and thought, I wonder if the save files are, are still there. And uh, they are. There are some uh, unanswered questions. A handful of uh, genocides that don't really have uh, any reason to ever have been done. Young John just decided he wanted to punch an entire casino to death for no well-explained reason. Possibly suggesting Young John could have benefited from a bit of therapy. It definitely couldn't have hurt. Still, I will say at the bare minimum, with the exception of a clear misunderstanding as to what perception did, and isn't it just appropriate that my biggest mistake was perception related, I'm not too embarrassed by this. I think this is, yes, pretty much okay. Obviously, this was just a little one-off. I thought it would be interesting to look back together. We'll be back to some more traditional Fallout fare next week. Hopefully, you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been a look into my first ever playthroughs of Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet though, I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.